Hi, I'm Susan Brickner-Wren. I have Start Stampin' Up Art Facebook group, and I'm a Stampin' Up demonstrator, but most folks really close to me know, not everybody knows, I actually started off with watercolor. Um, I've been a watercolor artist for oh, off and on about 20 years now, and um, one of my favorite techniques in watercolor is this salt technique that you can see on this painting. Um, this painting I'm, I'm really happy with. It was accepted into a juried exhibit and actually won an honorable mention from um, the juror was the president of the um, Columbus College of Art and Design. So I was really thankful and humbled. Um, and in her comments, uh, Dr. Melody Korn actually made mention um, that what, one of the things that she liked about the painting was the use of this salt water, salt technique in watercolor. Um, very artistic. Um, it takes a little bit of understanding of timing, but other than that, it's really easy, really effective. Um, I've used it for um, backgrounds of cards like this um, and this. Uh, I will continue to use it. I love it and I think it intimidates a lot of people. So what I wanted to do today was kind of um, show you um, my sweet little painting and I can't neglect to mention that this was inspired by, this painting was inspired by a card. I did a card a couple of years ago, um, went to a little show, the organizer of the show used my photograph of my card using all Stampin' Up! products um, as part of their uh, promotional uh, material and a woman came looking for that painting. I want that painting and at the time I didn't have that painting. I had a card using Knight of Navy and oh I forget which pink I used um, but just two colors on the card. I don't have any more left. I should make some more because it was so much fun um, and then you know she convinced me to do the painting so I have this interesting cycle of watercolor and stamping and stampin' up and you know watercolor societies kind of playing back and forth on each other so i wanted to show you that um and let me clear this away and we'll get going on showing you how to do the technique Alrighty, i've got things kind of set up to go ahead and um, show you how to do the salt technique um, it's a watercolor technique the um sorry i have a puppy the Rinker's Stampin' Up! Um, ink works amazing. Just absolutely perfect for watercolor techniques. Was one of those happy discoveries when I when I really started kind of crossing over the, the two different disciplines. So um, you do want the re-inker because you do want to be able to um, get some good saturated color. Um, I have not yet tried the new Misty Moonlight, which is a 2020 to 2022 in color. It's got a little purple tone to it. Um, somewhat like Night of Navy has that uh, purple shift and see what happens. I don't know if it shows on this card. Um, this background was used, uh, used watercolor paper um, and Night of Navy and closer to the salt where the color pulls, you can see purple show through that there's a, a good portion of a pink purple pigment say that three times fast, um, in Night of Navy. And then, you know, some of the other colors I just love. This is Pretty Peacock. And there's definitely blues in there. Um, I also will mix colors. So some of my backgrounds will have a, a dark blue um, with a, a lighter complement just to, you know, kind of see what happens. They're just, they're so much fun. Everyone is different. I'll run through a bunch um, of while these are drying but you do want um, the stamp pads you can use a separate container I just use the lid of the um, stamp pad but you want the re -inker. always good watercolor can get a little bit messy so it's always good to have paper towels on hand and then here I have um, Stampin' Up's watercolor paper it is um, to my understanding a cold press paper uh, again coming from the watercolor side uh, I was really happy watercolor paper, inexpensive watercolor paper, you will not get good results. 
it is the one thing you want to spend the money on. When I do my um, paintings, my larger watercolor paintings, I use arches, which has been an industry standard, the best for decades and decades. Um, this Stampin' Up's watercolor paper is really good quality. It's a good weight, it holds up. It does have that texture. Um, so I've got, this one is just on a piece of cardboard. Don't need anything fancy. Um, you do wanna tape your watercolor paper down because the water and the drying can make things buckle. Um, so you do wanna tape it down. And this is just cheap masking tape. As long as you're not leaving it on for weeks at a time, uh, affordable masking tape. Uh, again, this is just a piece of cardboard. I had marked off four by five and a quarter because you can, if you wanna tape really carefully, you can remove your tape, get that nice crisp line, and then away you go on a water on a card front. So in this case, um, this is marked, what have I got, a four by five and a quarter. I would tape just a little bit in and know that I've already got a border. So there's just so many, so many quick little tips for this stuff. So I've got that one on a piece of cardboard. Um, I have my aqua painters. Um, this set originally came with a um, larger round, is what they call these in the watercolor world. Um, great, great brushes. The price point's kind of insane for the fact that these are a synthetic brush that really holds the point, comes to a snap. Um, now the set is coming with uh, flat in addition to the rounds. And yeah, uh, that's a great, great. Um, Looking forward to trying that. But I do have these. I've got their um, barrels are already loaded with water. I have an old mason jar with water. Lots of ways to slice it. Here's another piece of the Stampin' Up! watercolor paper. Um, this is just a clipboard. You know, you can use the front, you can use the back. Um, kind of nice. And then I cannot forget to show you and tell you that the Stampin' Up! shimmery white paper, which I don't know if it shows on camera. It has a little bit of a sparkle to it anyway. It doesn't feel as heavy as the watercolor paper, but there's something in the way that this particular paper is made, it holds up. Not only does it hold up super well to the watercolor, of the water of the watercolor, it gives you a little bit different effects. Um, the blossoms look a little different. Sometimes the salt pulls a little more fine. Oh, that one I don't have quite have all the salt cleaned off. Um, it does leave, that shimmer shows through even when you do the watercolor salt technique. Um, and then when it's done, because it's a smooth finish paper, you can stamp right on that. So I'm gonna go through, um, when we get done with these and they're drying, I'm gonna go through, um, just all sorts of ideas I have about these. If only there was as much time in my world as ideas in my head. Um, but this allows you to stamp and color even over the saltwater technique, um, especially if you have like this combination of darker and lighter. Um, just amazing possibilities with, with those. And each one's different. Um, here I did a pretty harsh combination where it would be maybe a night sky and and a tree line or a horizon line, but just so many possibilities. So that's Stampin' White's Shimmery, Stampin' Up's Shimmery White Paper. Um, and so I've got those ready to go and I just wanted to make the point, just really hammering the point. You don't need a fancy backing material. This is um, just a nice weight cardboard that came from the end of a tablet. And I've been using that for um, taping down my watercolors. This is foam core. I think you can pick up a much bigger piece of foam core at, you know, um, the arts and crafts supply stores for a buck or two. Um, they're going to get a little dirty. They're going to get a little adhesive stuck to them, but they're lightweight and you can use them over and over and over again. So all good options. Um, alrighty, let me get going. I'm going to start with Oh, the other thing I should point out about the shimmery white, you'll notice I've got it 
taped really close to the edge. Um, I do have it taped down securely. It shouldn't buckle out on me. But by doing that, I can get four card bases. I can get four A2 card bases from one sheet. And, um, you know, I like to be able to do that and not have any waste. The five by sevens, I can get a card front, um, like tag components. These all have that watercolor background effect. Um, I did these oh, a year or so ago. There's that watercolor background and um, some dyes with a little uh, glimmer in there. And that was just cut with the, the biggest of the layering circles dies. So just so many, so many ways to use this technique, so many ways to go. So um, my salt is just regular table salt. I have it in a container that I can pour some out or pinch some and kind of sprinkle it a little bit faster because timing is important. And um, let me point out my September 2020 hostess code because I am not one of those demonstrators that has a worldwide following yet. <laughs> um, so if you do decide to place an order with me that is um, $150 or less, that would go to the September hostess code. I do a little song and dance whenever I see an order, um, especially from somebody new that might have found me. Um, but if your order is over 150, you can choose to get your own hostess rewards. Um, but if it's under 150, um, there's the hostess code for September. It'll probably carry over into October just a little bit. Um, and then there's a huge, as I do try to kind of build my Stampin' Up! Um, group, there is a wonderful promotion if you're signing up now. So I'll try to swing back to that and not bog you down with any of that right now. But had to mention it. We'll get that out of the way. And I think I'm going to start because I've really been looking forward to trying misty moonlight look at this it's all brand new and it's about to get a little bit messy which just like my fingertips and my studio if it's too clean i am not happy because i haven't been having any fun gotta get these things some use if they stay pristine forever they're not getting used so i am gonna um add a little bit of water to these droplets um, and just kind of, that is a very, like, you know, your, your re-inker is pretty saturate. Um, watercolor does dry a little lighter than what it looks. Um, so do keep that in mind as you apply the pigment, but I'm just going to wet and see, I've got a little bit of pigment now on there so I can get a little bit of a tint and I'm just squeezing because I've got water in there. I'm just squeezing that barrel a little bit. And I'm gonna coat the paper um, with this textured watercolor paper you can see I'm kind of letting it move down that's why I've got I'm holding it at an angle letting it move down and I'm kind of working back and forth for this technique I'd prefer not to have a bunch of skips in the texture of the paper um, but this is not anything highly technical it's basically just get a little bit of water all over it so your pigment moves and then when you um, put the pigment on the paper, you'll have an opportunity and see how quick, quick that's it's absorbing in. Um, but when you put the pigment on the paper, you'll have an opportunity to kind of move the pigment a little bit, see where you want it and see how saturated. So again, I'm just using the lid of the ink pad. And I'm gonna put some of this color. Look at how I love our blossoms. See that movement, that feathering, it's so pretty. And you can, you know, um, I'll leave blank spaces that uh, end up kind of looking like Aurora Borealis or, you know, you could drop in other colors. If you want it to look like cloudy, stormy. I'm just really anxious. I want some of this to be really saturated. I wanna see what this new color, Misty Moonlight, I wanna see what it does. And then with the idea that, um, I kind of like that in the middle though. Should I keep it? Should I let it? I like what it's separating, but it might be conflicting with the salt. 
So there it goes, done. The next one I can leave a cloud space if I want to. Um, and yeah, you don't, I mean, there doesn't have to be any rhyme or reason. If you know you wanna make like a, a hill look, you can play with it that way. Um, I do think it's best to kind of go over the paper. Like I said, I'm not a real fan of super big skips. And then if I have put too much water on, ooh, see how that's moving? All right, I'm gonna show you guys one more thing because it's just fun. So this is starting to dry. I'm gonna get that wet up there again. And you can tell when it's drying by the sheen on the paper. So like a gloss photo paper is probably a little too wet for the salt technique. Let me just set that there so I don't make a mess. Um, and see, I like that there. When it starts to go from really shiny to matte is when you want to add the salt. So like this area is a little too wet in here, but it'll do something different with the salt. So I'm just gonna drop, oh, that's gonna be awesome. I don't think this pigment is gonna disappoint me. Some of them, you know, they just kind of separate out into their own color and it looks really cool, but I think this one's got some purple in it. Okay, that's enough. That's just enough. It's messy, see? It's not on my hands yet, but it will be. So I'm gonna leave that level. Um, you can play with it if you want movement. Um, it's a little bit late now in the drying. Um, you can tilt it and that sort of thing. Um, I'll show you that on the next one. We'll do a couple of these. Um, but you can already tell, I hope you guys can see it, where that's drying more, it's separating out and it's got like a pink purple component. Oh, look at those already starting to blossom. Look at these where it's dry. Like seriously, how much fun is that? And if I wasn't jabbering so much to kind of show you the points, when I do these on my own, they're so fast. You do have to let them dry. But um, most often with the dry time, um, if I'm not chasing the puppy or doing a lot of laundry or swapping things over, um, I can be starting to do the die cuts. Um, like I use Heavy Whisper White to cut these. Um, this is Heavy Whisper White that I just tore. Um, but you can start, you know, if you've got like an afternoon that you're going to be crafting and you want to make your cards um, or, you know, whatever with this background, um, it doesn't take hours and hours to dry. Um, you can kind of tell this one's shifting and see the colors are happening. How cool is that? And that's on watercolor paper, the Stampin' Up! watercolor paper. So let me set that aside. I'll get something else. So far I haven't like dripped mess everywhere. Okay, I think for this one, I'm gonna see what happens between the seaside spray and the misty moonlight. Um, I think they're really nice compliments because they both have that um, kind of cool, maybe purple tone, purple or gray component in the pigment. Um, but I think they would look really good together. So there's a few dots of pigment. I'm gonna leave this here. For the folks that do not yet have the aqua painters, here's another. This is like a cheap brush. There's no excuse not to get started on this um, technique. This, yeah. And I think it says it was a, well, yeah. It was just a cheap brush. I got it like super early on. You could use, brushes from the hardware store just to put the paint on. I do like being able to control, or just to put the water on. I like being able to control the pigment um, with the aqua painters, but you could also use the edge of another brush. So don't hesitate, like get out and play with this stuff. Um, again, because of the texture, you know, you wanna work it in. And you wanna try for some, you know, pretty even coverage. So I hope you can see that water is just pretty, pretty universal. So I'm going to start darker at the top with the Misty Moonlight and ooh, I might need even a little more pigment. Let me get a couple more drops out. 
And it's funny, this is not a time consuming technique, but it is a little bit time sensitive. Oh wow, that was already feathering down. Oh, I love that. I love to watch that happen. Isn't that cool? So we'll kind of bring in the outside, you know, vignette or a little bit of a border idea. Um, maybe a little bit of an idea that there's wind coming in. There we go. And you can, um, I tend to work lighter to darker, which in, is a general rule is smart. Since I did not do that with this, you can squeeze the water um, through and look, look how that cleared. Can you see that? Did that clean that fast? All right, now we're gonna go into the seaside spray. And wow, they are similar in their color, their color profile. together though. Now see that cool, that lighter cool tone almost looks like the sky reflecting off of the snow to me. At a glance that's kind of what I see. And I put, okay so this is blossoming up because I talk too much <laughs> and I let the, um, the misty moonlight start to dry. And so because there's more water here, it's pushing up there, which actually looks kind of cool. Um, I don't know where my little mister is. I've got, oh, I do know where my mister is. You guys are gonna see fixes, quick fixes. I actually keep my Stampin' Up um, mister, mini mister, in with my plain air watercolor supplies, typically. Mm hmm I must have moved it last time. All right. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Not the one I was looking for, but it is going to do the trick. You see that changes up the texture as well? <clears throat> Pardon me. So I'm going to let that move a little bit. And I don't want that big drip to happen, so I'm just gonna tend to that. I'm gonna let that go. It's gonna look pretty cool. And again, um, I've got some areas that are a little more wet, and the and some areas are a little more dry, so the salt is going to behave differently. And of course, where you don't have as much pigment. It's not gonna be as dramatic looking, but I think when that's done, that will be a beautiful snowy hillside to a dark sky. How much fun. I do love the way those are pulling and separating. I like seeing that contrast of color and you know, when you play with these different pigments, you can go after what you think is most appealing to you. But everyone is different. And so, you know, folks that get these cards just really love them. I've got um, a friend of mine, I used this technique on a Christmas card a couple years ago, and um, went to her house and she had it framed. My Christmas card was framed and hanging up. So that was really sweet. She's like, Susan, it's a little work of art which is just such a great compliment. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. All right, and one more I have to do, I have to do the shimmery white. All right, so let me make sure I've got enough pigment here. Now, as long as I don't leave a puddle of water um, in the top of the ink pad. Uh, I'll just close that up and that extra ink will stay in there. Now if I get it really messy, really runny, um, I'll just wipe it out with a paper towel. So, and again, if, if this seems too messy to you, you can just get little, little bowls, little ramekins, little plastic containers, whatever um, you have on hand and do the technique the same way. So, all right. For the sake of control, I am going to use my aqua painter. 
Now, I am thinking I will get four um, horizontally oriented cards out of this. So I'm gonna do color transitions uh, about half and half. Oops, I hope I don't have to reload my aqua painter. So I'm just getting even water here. And again, I'm kind of tilting the paper so I can see that I'm getting water across the paper. And coming all the way down, probably off camera, sorry about that. I knew this would be a little longer video, but um, once you kind of see that timing of um, damp, now see, I lost my moisture that quick. That's the only bad thing about going for the, the full sheet. You do have to work quicker. So here we go. Just work that pigment. See that moving down? Oh, I like that streaming. It's happening right in there. This is gonna seem pretty dark. Yeah, <laughs> I guess where I had let it go a little loose. Oh, I love that though. I wanna retain that for sure. And when I go ahead and um, cut the paper for different cards, I can kind of choose, you know, if I want to omit something, yeah, let that get too dry. If I want to omit something um, or focus on it, and then the card design is actually kind of a nice forgiving because it, um, I have that little hill. So, you know, so many folks think you have to be perfect about these things. You don't, and they turn out just awesome. It doesn't have to be perfection. It doesn't have to be, um, I think the thing I kind of hold on to is like what I saw in my mind's eye. Um, that's not necessarily what I'm gonna land on and not necessarily the best. So I'm just putting a little angle here. Work that through. And let this, let the water and the paper, the combination of, you know, I guess you'd say it's like a fluid dynamic. Let that work for you. See, I almost hesitate to put salt on it because that's cool. But we will do this kind of quickly. And put this down here where you see that eggshell shine. Portions of this are have dried just that quickly, um, and they're not going to get the blossoms. But a lot of those portions have this great bleed back and this like um, feathering that you get with the water. So, alrighty, I think that's good. I'm gonna clean up a little bit, let these dry, and I'll be back. Alrighty, here we are. The watercolor has dried. The salt really did the trick. And um, this is the watercolor paper. This is the one I did with just Misty Moonlight. <clears throat> and you can see, I hope the camera picks up on it. I just left the salt right on there. Some of it will dissolve um, just a little bit. Mostly what it's doing is it's pulling the pigment to the salt. But you can, if you can't see it, maybe you can hear that that's still there. So um, the first thing I do when it's fully dried is you know, rub that off. And then um, I thought it was probably worth showing you just to be a little bit careful. And this is one of those points where, um, you know, walk away and let it dry is probably best. Um, and then the tape will come up really nice. But here you can see, um, to my point about if you want to use the tape line to make a natural border, 
Um, it's usually pretty crisp. Any of these little like blossoms out or little edge things, um, I think they look kind of cool. They um, kind of speak to the fact that this is an original watercolor. It's a little original work of art. So, how cool does that look? And that was Misty Moonlight. Really pretty. It's got the the little pink pink purple shift, and then I'm also seeing some of the true blue kind of separated out there. Just gorgeous, if you ask me. So that was the first one we did. Um, I'll kind of hustle along. This is the second one, also on watercolor paper, and it was interesting to me because we had the um, Misty Moonlight to the top and the Seaside Spray at the bottom. And the Seaside Spray looked like it had a really similar color profile as the Misty Moonlight, but this is, um, I would guess say, more of a true blue. Love what happened here between the two of them. I think I might have to do more where I get them to mix a little bit, but look how great that looks where it pulled to back to the white of the paper. Um, so it doesn't have that uh, kind of pink left behind. It, it pretty much pulls to the white of the paper, at least it did in this case. So good to know, and I think they look awesome together. So there goes the salt. And um, again, you know, if you don't leave the tape on for days or weeks, it comes up pretty nice. The biggest thing, you just want to be a little bit careful when you're pulling the tape that you have let the paper dry all the way. But then look, this will have a really nice, really nice border. And again, if you don't like that, you can trim it. It's up to you. Just giving you options. So that's the second one. Um, I won't make you wait on me to pull that all apart. And then this, again, I have not removed the salt yet, but I hope you can see um, the shimmery white paper. It tends, in my opinion, it tends to give a little higher contrast on the salt technique and smaller areas um, that it pulls like this is this is a pretty big reaction and of course all that's going to vary with the um, amount of water and your timing but um, a lot of times the watercolor paper will get um, just bigger blossoms I probably have some examples through here but let me get the salt off of this and I'll uh, take the tape off as well Love it. Just, it turned out differently than I thought. Like this with the little downplay really looks like some snow moving in. But you could, you could flip it too and have that be kind of a horizon line and, you know, set, um, especially if you did the white, um, like this deer. On purpose, I put the bright white deer from the, um, Oh, what's the name of this die set? Mm, Snow Globe Scenes dies. So I put him purposefully against the dark and let the lighter there. So it's, you know, it's all fun. It's all just playing. It's all just seeing what you see when the watercolor is done. The salt and the watercolor are done doing what they do. So, yeah. And again, just take it easy if um, as you start to pull the masking tape. If you notice the paper starts to rip, um, this is behaving just fine for me right now, but sometimes you'll, you'll kind of catch it. Um, then all I'll do is I'll just, you know, pull up the tape from the opposite direction and just go easy so I don't ruin it. But these are coming apart nice and easy. So I'll get four nice card backgrounds um, out of that one sheet of uh, shimmer paper. Alrighty, so super quick I laid these out because I'm typically not much for, you know,
pushing anybody or you know kind of promoting that way but this is a good uh, starter kit promotion they have running now through September 30th um, what they're doing is the $99 uh, you choose $125 worth of product. You don't even have to pay shipping. It is the $99. Um, $25 worth of product and you get what they're calling a get and go starter kit that comes with some pre-cut components. There'll be links to make some um, really nice projects, but they've got uh, everything you need, including the little rhinestone basic jewels and two stamp sets. This they have selected for you. This, this is, but it's total bonus. Um, and I, you know, could give a guesstimate what the paper that they've got pre-cut and kind of set for cards and some card designs. I could give a guess what that's worth, but just know it's above and beyond. The Queen Anne's Lace stamp set here in the U.S. is 17 dollars the so much love is 20 and the jewels are five so that's 42 dollars bonus um on top of the 25 bonus and not paying shipping and handling so it's a great time i would love to have you as part of my team i'd love to have a team that i call my starting lineup and um be able to um you know exchange ideas and projects and work together and um just kind of get that going but if you're interested, you can contact me, message me, um, and let me know. Let me get rid of all that because I wanted to show folks some more. Um, I kind of, you know, my catalogs are always so dog-eared and tagged up. But when you when I look at this technique and I look at, see my bookmarks are previous <laughs> backs. Um, this was just Seaside Spray. And so there's some interesting color, but I thought it would be kind of cool um, when I look at the Dove of Hope. Uh, the dyes have um, kind of some void spots, some see-through, some pop-throughs. And how cool would that be to have something like this or even one of the really dark and vibrant ones in the background? Look at all these. You can tell I'm getting ready to go. Wouldn't that be pretty behind that dove? Wouldn't any of those be pretty? I just, Pacific Point does a really nice job with this technique as well. Well, look like this one, I moved the paper a little bit. I'm so easily distracted, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's ideas there. Um, the nativity would be really cool because it's got the shapes. And then also, if you wanted to do um, you know, it doesn't have to be white on the background. It could be darker, it could be colored. If you want to use the watercolor paper and then stamp on it, um, just use the Stamparatus because there's enough texture to that watercolor paper that if you want a really saturated stamp like you would for a silhouette, um, using the Stamparatus and being able to flip it back and forth is a big help. But yeah, I just kind of went through and I'm like, wow. Now this um, Trimming the Town Suite is perfect the coming home bundle um they had in past years sets that had very similar um and they would be amazingly complimentary um with the hill the trees um i trying to think it was in some of those other sets but um and the houses the um, now the still scenes has um, like the two part the church that you could do in two parts the trees um, when I did these I actually um, cut out the three trees together but then um, took them apart cut them apart to place them how I wanted them on the card but see you can do that with this set still scenes and the snow globe scenes dies are still available this home together would be perfect. You could mix and match them. They seem to be the same scale. Um, oh, I didn't write what color that is. It looks like I got a little Moroccan mint mixed in there with Pretty Peacock, or it could just be Pretty Peacock. Um, the mousse would be kind of cool as a silhouette or as a stamp and color. Um, and these are all from the current holiday catalog. 
Oh yeah. Wouldn't that, I hope when I'm in frame, wouldn't that reindeer look cool on a card that style? And then again, you can use it for, you know, tags and other decorations. Um, I have cut some snowflakes out of um, paper, like, you know, with this technique. Can you see how, like, big and beautiful? And then um, I've done cards where I've used the paper as the background and die cut the snowflake so you see a silver paper, a white paper, a darker blue paper behind this in the window that you've cut out. Um, and that's really effective. And again, each and every one's gonna be different. Um, the Snow Wonder would be super cute um, to do him. And then um, I was thinking he'd be really cool to stamp with um, stays on and then carefully put a little of the white back using uh, craft, the Whisper White Craft ink because that tends to be a little bit transparent. So you'd still see some of this um, through, but kind of make him pop. I tell you, I've got more ideas in my brain than hours in my day. So I'm just sharing all these concepts with you. And if you do anything, let me know, post it to the Facebook group or, or give me a shout. Now, wouldn't these guys, this warm and toasty, wouldn't they look super cute coming over a scene like that? I just, ugh. trees are always awesome. I probably didn't even mark all of them that I thought would be. Oh, I thought these would be super cute. The Menagerie mix-up. Um, see how they have this little um, design, like the three little faces. You could mix it up any way you wanted to, but have one of these as the background and then um, just tear a piece of Whisper white paper. Use a little bit of the shimmery white paper and have them peeking over like that. Would be so super cute. Lots of ideas. This freezing fun. Oh my goodness, can you see these? And you know, they've got the dies um, that uh, coordinate. So you could have fun coloring them with blends, um, coloring them with the Stampin' Write markers and then um, die cutting them out and popping them again. Sometimes you get what makes like a natural looking hill or separation. Um, here like this one, That wouldn't that be cute to have some of these guys racing down? I just, all sorts of ideas, all sorts of ideas. Um, I don't wanna say, did I mark it? Oh yeah, I marked a few in the, so tell me what you think. And if you play with any of these, send me the results. The trees in Campology would be awesome stamped over that effect, right? Um, oh, and then I hope I tagged. I hope I tagged one here. I'm going by other ideas. Um, the Zoo Globe. I'm hoping you guys can see this. If you do this same technique and you do it with a uh, green base, what you end up with is, um, it looks like foliage that'll come in the background. It can look um, pretty exotic if you use more like the bright popping colors. It's gonna tend to look a little more jungle or the really rich dark colors. Um, could go like more jungle or a little bit more like pine trees. But wouldn't that be cool? And then um, these, crossover this is in um the same still scenes and snow globe scenes dies so you would already have those dies um if you just wanted to try that stamp set and then they've got the shaker domes this one i did oh i should know the name of this dsp feels like frost this designer series papers is awesome um, but I just used this designer series paper in the background. They have silver on one side and these great, just beautiful, rich colors and um, photo scenes on the front. So that's another way you can kind of mix and match and just make the most out of your supplies and still have fun. So you're making, you know, different styles of cards with your goodies that you do have. Um, Here's the still scenes, and then it refers to the snow globe dies. Snow front, stamped over top of something like that. 
That'd be super cute. Look at that little snowman. Nature's Beauty, I think, would really work. Um, I really love, I love the artwork on this one, so that's probably one I'll try sooner rather than later. Um, the Let It Snow, and, you know, this guy has the punch, so, you know, some folks like to, you know, be able to stamp color punch. In his case, you could stamp him right on Whisper White or Shimmery White and, you know, run with it and pop him up in front of one of these backgrounds. So, wow. Thanks for staying with me. So many cool products, so many good ideas. Um, I hope you try it. If you have any questions, if you have wicked success or you don't understand why it doesn't work just as well as you would like it to, um, yeah, reach out to me. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, and again, uh, my September hostess code is there. If, um, if you want to order any of the goodies from me, I do a little happy dance and appreciate it. And yeah, take care. The holidays are coming up. Um, yeah, hopefully everyone's staying happy and healthy. Thanks a bunch.